from the top? Yep. No, none of the confusing stuff. Boys, it's been a very long, frustrating, arguative, a bully road here. <laughs> and I'm just glad that this is the last one we have to do review wise. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review with our final Friday the 13th review of the 2009 Friday the 13th reboot slash remake, whatever you want to call it nowadays. I am with my cohorts. A uh, jokester. And Creek Margin 1. So, I guess from the usual standpoint we have, we would... Hey, shut up, I'm talking. From our usual standpoint, we have the new person... Go first when it comes to Friday the 13th. I know we had a huge debate before we started rolling here. We and we no! all had got frustrated and started butting heads and everything. But that's okay. It, that's what happens. So, jokes here. The floor is yours. Preference. The, the, the intro to starting this movie was ignore everything. It doesn't make any sense. Which, if you take the movie from ignore everything, it doesn't make any sense, then it won't make any sense. But if you take it from the perspective of you literally... Just remember the first movie and Jason in general and take Jason lore, it makes sense. And what that is, is in the beginning, if you ever get confused like I did, Jason isn't alive in the beginning. It's the baby Jason that pops out the water and dunks the girl in before she goes to the insane asylum in number one and just goes from there. And if you take that into account, this movie makes logical sense throughout the entire time. The science makes sense, even though it's like, Jason's alive or Jason's dead. Jason acts like he would be He's fast. He runs around. He follows Jason logic. He doesn't talk. He kills horny kids. He kills horny kids in creative ways. And he pops out of the lake. Like both my cohorts said, it was really nice to see Jason run and Jason do things quickly. Jason stab people. Jason slash people. Blood guts go everywhere. And uh, everybody dies which is always beautiful. And Jason gets to spend his time in his lake. Like I said, the science makes sense. There are some logic that doesn't make sense. If Jason is dead, then why would Jason need power? Um, but it would make sense that Jason would need food. The other is Jason doesn't kill anybody in the community. And now all of a sudden, these kids go to the camp and now he's killing people in the community. Well, it's like, well, he's stealing gas. Well, why does he need gas if he's dead? Now, if he's not dead, then that makes the entire first scene very confusing as to is this a redo of the beginning where it's 25 years after the Jason birthday killing? Why is Jason so young? Or is this the next day, which I get confused about whether the mother would search or not, and blah, 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 which is a long discussion. Movie-wise, giving a movie rating, I feel like this is the best Jason movie ever. Having given my rating on number one, I would give it like an eight. I like this one. It was good. It was scary. It was cool. There wasn't a bunch of kooky stuff. So Jason teleporting, Jason having ungodly superhuman strength and things like that. Those are wonderful. Those are cool. But them not doing that made it a little edgy, a little cooler. Like they felt like they could kill him. They felt like they could fight back. And so it felt like a really good movie all the way through there didn't seem to be any plot holes but there was the confusion of why would Jason do what Jason does and is Jason alive or is Jason dead so other than that I would give this movie on a Jason scale a 10 on a regular scale I really enjoyed it it was really cool probably an 875 I'm gonna give it a 9 but there was a lot of confusion in it that needed explaining to make it so it's gonna be an 875 and not quite a 9 my complaints and praises remain the same as the last time I watched this film um, it's a good film um, but they tried to do too much in the film which led to confusion is they tried to reboot the entire <laughs> franchise 
going up to too many movies at once, trying to cover too much plot points without properly explaining things in the beginning. They went from origin of Jason, baghead Jason, to current day Jason, all in one movie, which rushed it, and that took up half the movie for a completely separate group of killings that they did. The entire origin story was like a quick scene in the beginning that flashed during the credits in an annoying way. Um, so I wouldn't say this is a perfect film. Um, some of the acting is really shoddy, um, mainly the douchey guy. Trent. Um, yeah, and the multiple sex, them having sex during multiple kills was always really annoying. I liked most of the other characters um, overall, but mainly he, he was kind of didn't make a lot of sense. Kills were great. He was really ruthless. Um, every kill was like fun. There wasn't one that I was just like, oh, well, he's just going to hack and slash, and that's it. They're all they're all fun. Um, at some points, he did some things that were unnecessary that I thought was kind of weird. Like, after he threw the hatchet and uh, the machete in the black hatchet in the black guy's back, after he had already killed him, it's shown that he's in a hot tub. So, after he was already dead, he picked him up and put him inside of a hot tub. <laughs> that's Jason's character. So, Jason has to hide the bodies in a fun way. I feel like they did that for cinematic... <laughs> But, you know, overall, I think it's a solid Jason film. Um, the mask is really cool. Um, even the ending, they're having callbacks to, oh, he's dead. And then, oh, wait, is he really there? And then, I mean, like, he comes back and jumps at him. Now, the question is, is that just like the old movies where it was a hallucination what? that they're having after the trauma they just went through? Or is it actual actually happening? Because that could have just been from that one chick's uh, point of view. Because who, know, who knew, knows how how much Jason fed her because she was missing for over a month. She might have been sleep deprived. Maybe she's hallucinating and they're all fine. Um, but they didn't really answer that and they haven't made a second one in 10 years. So uh, we probably will never see that answer due to court reasons. My rating for the overall for the film is a, is a seven and a half um, out of 10, which is my highest rated Jason film. That's my rating. Um, I'm glad to be done with this series because I like a couple of the movies out of the series, but overall I do not like this series. So I'm glad to be able to put this behind us. To kind of roll off a point with Jokester here, I mean, him saying he's confused whether he's alive or he's dead or whatever, I am assuming that with what the directors and producers were doing was that he was alive because the only way that he would be scavenging for supplies like kerosene or like ways to like get electricity for the campgrounds or whatever or like having the the girl be in his underground lair that's another thing i want to bring up a little bit and just you know and whatnot her being gone for a month and everything like he would have to be alive to like do all that kind of stuff so you could argue say. you could argue no i think he was dead you would think he was dead yeah because okay so why was he needing kerosene for lights why was he needing lights for security purposes mm -hmm. not for a survival thing well if he could turn the lights on he could probably turn them off if he has the tunnels then he could just teleport yeah, that was that was probably the coolest thing of the whole like movie besides how Jason was portrayed in this film because this is my favorite Jason is the fact that they gave a reason how he teleports is cuz it's the underground tunneling system. Like that either that was already there or he kind of built off of it over the years because that is how he gets from point A to point B so fucking quick. He just made quick shortcuts underground. <laughs> the other thing that may have made the confusion better is if they put dates. Like there's other ones that say this date and that date. They didn't say yeah, and so it's like, so should I ignore the past videos, movies, or should I well, keep them? Or they only they only gave two dates, which was uh, the the 1980 date, which was like July 13th, 19, 19, 1980, and then there was present day, which at the time you would assume that present day was Friday the 13th, 2009. Mm -hmm. So that's about 20 years later about give or take if you want to do the math in your head i personally think that jason was alive in this film that's just how i look at this film and everything because i believe that he even in the originals and in the remake i believe that he survived after he drowned that's just what i believe in this is my favorite portrayal of jason Voorhees. the guy who they picked as jason Voorhees is probably the scariest motherfucker i've seen in my entire life he's huge he is fast and i'm just like if I, if I were to find a Jason that I wanted to be scared of and run away from and hopefully not die, it'd be that Jason. <laughs> there's, there's one thing that I want to grab about, and it's not the movie. It's the fandom of the series. That is where me and the fandom go separate ways. A lot of people who've seen this movie, 
<laughs> who've seen all the films like I have, didn't like the film because they thought they humanized him a bit too much. And I, for one, thought it was a breath of fresh air. It gave him character. It gave him reason to do what he does. It gives him... It, it makes him... I, I liked it. It gave him more emotion instead of just robot, kill, kill. Mm-hmm. Like he, like he was, when he was sharpening the machete and everything, he start, he stopped because he started to remember what happened to his mom and he just kind of went into a blind rage because of it. Yeah, he starts kicking things. Yes, I loved that because it gives him more character. And people were like, no, you're just humanizing him. That just because makes him look dumb. And I'm like, no. The spirit of Jason would still have emotion and do things. Yeah. Like anger, which is why he kills kids who have sex and he runns around and he teleports his, 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 his I need to do this thing. I need to keep people out of my swamp. Yeah, like, like he—he's he, 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 a swamp monster. Stay out of my swamp. I feel like he does all that other stuff to keep the, the mm-hmm. other people away, just to distract mm-hmm. himself from that. Because if he's alone long enough, he'll just start rocking back and forth and everything. And even if he was alive and there were no plot holes in the, the he's alive thing, him being dropped in the lake—it's like at that at that moment when they do the end scenes, like he then he becomes the uh, the, the swamp spirit. monster, the spirit of Jason, the the the. The, the, this is my swamp, stay away. I kind of feel like the lake just rejuvenates him. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think what happens at the end. It rejuvenates him back to his uh, form, I guess, and whatnot. <laughs> You're not even that far into that, no, so we're not even into that. No idea what you just... <laughs> all in all, another thing that I wanted to also point out where a lot of Jason fans that I probably would know would hate me for is that if we don't talk about the crossover at all, this is technically the first Friday the 13th film I saw that introduced me to Jason himself. So, I'm prob- I'm more than likely going to pick this over most of the original series because I enjoyed for what they did in here. There's a, there's a couple of things here and there I'm like, eh, could have done without, and whatnot, but it, they're just small, tiny little things. I am going to actually rate this on a... Critical review, and I stand uh, correct that I still enjoy this film, and I'm very happy. I still do. I'm going to give it a... I'm honestly going to give it an 8.5, because from my standpoint, I actually really enjoyed it. I really did. Like, it's. I would say it's on par with the other two films I like from the original series, in my opinion. Like, part four has some things that they do, and I like more than this film, and vice versa. I like... It's like a back and forth thing with with me with the remake part four and part six, that and just it's the first one I saw. <laughs> it, it kept good pace. The logic made sense, and that's why it does get the the eight point seven five. There wasn't anything in it that was like. Did it keep good pace though? It that's keep, that's one thing where I feel like uh, that's one thing. When I say keep good paces, there was never a part where I was like, man, they're taking forever on this. This is boring. It's not. See, a- that's where one thing I feel like uh, Krieger and I would disagree on is that back then we kind of agree that it felt kind of like rushed and choppy. But watching it again from like a standpoint, I'm like, well. They did cut out a lot of random bullshit that we didn't need to see and see again in the first two or three films. It mm-hmm. just was like, okay, mother died. Okay, that would make sense. I wish that scene was a little bit longer. The only other thing I wish they would have done different is I wish they didn't have that long 25-minute scene in the beginning with the original crew where he killed off one by one, and then title scene, and then the rest of the movie. That's another thing I didn't like. That was a good killer, though. Oh, yeah, the kills were awesome. Oh, yeah. That's what. That's when it's kind of twisted to the way. Is he alive? He has electricity. Jason doesn't usually use electricity. He just lives in the lake. But no, he's living in a house and it keeps his mom's head by the candles. It's a. Sh- it's a shrine. I'd rather a shrine. Of them have spent more time with the mom part than the than the baghead killings. Yeah. Like have sh- yeah. have that be quicker. Not have all the stupid exposition of everybody. Oh, the, the kids just have. Hey, look, these are kids. Kill, 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 kill. You're good. Um, or maybe some plot holes to the gap in between them, or some viewing the mom. Maybe a yeah. little. Bit. I will. I will say. I feel like when it when it comes down to uh, trying to figure out whether he's alive or dead or anything, and they don't really explain it, I think that just lets the viewer either get really confused or just let them leave it and leave it up as a mystery. Like, is he really alive? Is he really dead? Also, the human. So, from a Jason perspective, the human aspect and the pendant. It's like a really weird thing that I don't know. Do they have any allude to that in lore or anything like that? That he keeps something he cares about his mom. It's like his testament to his mom is he kills horny teenagers. That is that that he that is so in the lore. That, yeah, he builds a shrine. He keeps her head. He that's just a little extra mom because he he loved his mom very much. Yes, 
Because that was the only parent he has since the dad. Yeah. The dad was never brought up into the fucking story until you actually read the back back story. But the, mm-hmm. he was a single kid, like single a single kid with a single yeah. mom. Yeah. Any final thoughts before we close out this review and? <laughs> so thank God. We're done. Watch something from the 21st century. So my last thought that I want to share is that, like, like I said, I am also very happy that I'm done with the series because from when I started this series, I started it two years ago, and now I'm finally done with it. We're done reviewing the series, but we have to talk about Jason one more time, and that is just ranking them. We don't have to go into depth detail. About any of the movies in particular, we're just going to rank what we think is the worst to the best. So the next time you see us, you'll see us rank all 12 films. 12 films from worst to best. Or, I guess, in Joke's perspective, the 7, 8, 9, 10 crossover and remake in one. The seven films he saw. <laughs> Midnight Tool Murderers Unite! <laughs> This is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review with my cohorts, Jokester, Creator Margin 1. And we are signing out. <sighs> we are leaving Camp Crystal Lake finally. Yeah.